so that is the simplest form of leadership. Then you have got the other one, you got the transactional leadership. Transactional leadership is almost like a business thing. I want something from you, yeah, but you must get something from me. Once we transact, then we will be okay. Right? If you disagree with what I want, then the deal is off. And this is the simplest way of leadership, and politicians like this. I give you water today, give me three votes tomorrow. Yeah? Uh, if you don't give me three votes, then you don't get your water. Okay? And sometimes our bosses are also like that. Yeah? You want promotion, jump three feet today. If you don't jump three feet, forget about the promotion. Yeah? Very transactional. But we cannot say that to our boss. We cannot say to our boss today, you jump three feet three feet and I'll tell you something. He said, you go to that. <laughs> because he's on a very high hierarchy. You know? And you have no right to tell him what to, how, to, how to jump. Right? But we have been told to jump all the time and universities are good at this. Yeah? You say, jump, you say, how high is it? You know? You say, oh, I think, why jump? Yeah? So this is transactional leadership in the in, in Paris. And when they analyzed it, they find this kind of leadership is actually very ineffective. <coughs> And it's a passive kind of leadership. You just take on, take on, take on, right? And therefore they say, well, what do you want now? You want something which is more active. And they invented another one called the transformation leadership. So everywhere now you see transformation leadership. Transform this, transform that, transform this, transform that. Fine, yeah? But sometimes you can transform into something which is worse. You always think that transformation is good. Yeah? Sometimes you can transform to be an idiot. <coughs> Right? So you can transform to be a very foolish person. Yeah? You're looking at the United States of America. The kind of transformation they are going through. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, just last night, the news is uh, I think there is a, an increase of 70% of Americans who want to move to New Zealand. Yeah. But everybody else wants to go to America. Both loads want to go to America. What's wrong with us? Yeah. Americans want to, to want to go to New Zealand, but we want to go to America for all God's sake. Yeah. So there is this thing that we call about transformational, but what is this all about? Is it permanently good, or is it something that we need to think about? It, yeah? And these words come from this guy, yeah, McGregor Burns. McGregor Burns talked about transformational yeah, as a process, leaders and their followers rise to one another to a higher level of morality and motivation, among others. But here's a key point that I like about him. In this book called Leadership, which is 1970, 1978, I think on page 2 or something like that, very easy. It says that leadership and followers rise to one another. We are competing with our followers, competing for what? To go to a higher level of morality and motivation. Okay? We are not competing because we want a big car, we are not Position, we are not competing. We are competing for something which is very, very sublime, which is very, very, very sacrosanct as far as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So, this is a nice door that is open to us to look at it and create more value on what it means by level of morality and, and, and motivation. Right? And therefore, there is this whole idea then when you want to be transformational, you need to have ethics. Ethics is the one that is so important in this transformational event. Okay? And he says, divorce from ethics, leadership is reduced to management and politics is a mere tech. And we see this all the time. Okay? For those of us who observe this, politics becomes just mere transaction. All right? And sometimes it is unethical when you look at the level of corruption that is going on. Not only in your country, but all over the world. There is something that we need to, you know, to be very, very good okay? And leadership then becomes just about managing things. There's nothing to look forward to, there's nothing to reinvent, there's nothing to, you know, uh, to, 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 to discover. Yeah? You just manage. Manage is a, to me, is a bad word. You just manage. The problem is still there. As long as you, the problem does not surface and you can manage it, it's fine. Right? That's what management is to me as far as, as far as it is. Yeah? So, 
we will look at this then. So the transformation of leadership then talks about also integrity and it talks about authenticity. Authenticity means be who you are. You don't have to pretend otherwise. Many leaders are trying to pretend be something else. Okay. Authenticity means talking about yourself, talking about your values, talking about your, you know, your own sincerity in this particular context, and this is where integrity is all about. And this is not new to us, because it's part of our wisdom, part of the Asian wisdom, to respect other people, you know, to, to, you know, uh, to, 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 to make sure that you don't embarrass them in public, which is quite different from, from the kind of thing that I know uh, in that case in the US. And then there's also this idea of charismatic leadership when you develop a kind of a value that people will look up to you as good and you will have a lot of And you can see a lot of these uh, charismatic people around that basically uh, gives the kind of a value setting that I was. But because charismatic can also be abused, then you have got people who pretend to be quote unquote leaders, but they are not. Yeah. So you need to go back to what Stephen Covey said. In other words, the people who are charismatic must be also charismatic privately. But Stephen Covey say you must be you must have a private victory before you have a public victory. In other words, your life is well managed. Your family is well managed. You are well managed before you can tell other people how to manage their life. If your life is corrupted, if your family is toxic, tell me if you are one of those gangsters you know, uh, that do corruption and go out publicly and say, please do this, then you are not that kind of leader. And there's so many of them around. <coughs> and there's so many of them around. And you do not know whether they are actual leaders or just meet the leaders. So there's two things there. One is what they call the personality ethics and one is what they call the character ethics. The char character ethic is something that is built in you, that you nurture it, yeah? and it becomes part and parcel of you. It doesn't matter where you are. That character, that character ethic stacks. You can be in a room alone, you can be in public, you can be anywhere but that character stands. The personality ethics is the one that makes you a chameleon. When I meet him, my color is green. When I meet her, my color is yellow. When I meet another person, my color is black, depending on what you want. Yeah? So I begin to change my personality as and when it suits the situation. Right? And so you see this group of leaders who actually flip-flop, change their stand, there's no principles, right? And it's all about themselves the other day. They say they want to fight for you, but actually they're fighting for themselves. And here's the thing that I think we need to think about when you talk about integrity and authenticity in this particular thing. So you have to be yourself in this particular respect. But again, this charismatic leadership has been redefined by people like Jim Collins when he in his book, Good to Great, yeah? and he says this, five le level five leaders will have this dimension of a blend of personal humility and professional will, channel channeling the ego needs away from themselves to the goal of building an organization. These people, in, in, in simple language, are not egoistic. It's not about themselves. It's about the organization. They want to invest in the organization, yeah? and therefore they are very humble. <clears throat> and again, humility is a very Eastern. Yeah. Um, the Chinese have got a proverb, uh, or even the Malay have got a proverb, the higher the bamboo is, the bigger the man. Yeah. The higher the bamboo is, the bigger the man. Right? Uh, means that the, the higher you go, the more humble you are. The Malays have got a straight paddy. Yeah. The more laden the paddy is, the more it goes down to the ground. Yeah. Lagi berisi, lagi tunggu. We've got another saying. Yeah. Ular mengucur akar tidak akan hilang bisa. Yes. A poisonous snake. If they stay on the ground, 
they still remain poisonous. Right? These are these are words of wisdom that has to do with leadership, but who cares? But who cares? Yeah? It's part and parcel of our values, but we take our value system from somewhere else. The moment you are successful, the more arrogant you are. Yeah? The more corrupt you are, the more detached you are, the more aloof you are. Yeah? It's nothing but this bamboo. It is almost perhaps a plastic bamboo that is somewhere. It's not the nature of the okay. yeah? So when when Colin says this, then I begin to reflect, hey, what is new here? This guy is saying what my father, my forefathers have been saying to me, but I don't put value to it because they are not Western. You know? It takes a Western person to wake you up and say, well, this is what it is. And this is where I'm very convinced to go back, to look at what we've got within our own society, within our own community, what our forefathers have been doing, and bring it back as a kind of wisdom that other people can learn from us. Despite that, this now the latest that I can be as far as the why great leaders are in short supply. Yeah. There's many, 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 many theories that we've got. It says leaders are inundated by increasing perception of incompetence, greed, quality at the expense of the government, the tax, and the management. Yeah? And I perhaps cannot disagree with this. But from my own experience, this is something which is really true. Yeah? And therefore, what do we do if this is a situation <coughs> to find out a solution that we think can offer some hope in the future? So working on this, we want to work on this kind of a balanced leadership, and I pick this up from one of the very renowned philosopher and scholars, yeah, Al Ghazali, who lives in the 11th century. He's known in the West as Al Ghazal or Al Ghazalus, yeah, one of the very, very important academic for me because he's an academician. He has, he's, he has been. Uh, President or Vice Chancellor of the University that was then equivalent to one of the best universities in the world. Yes. But after a few years he resigned. For many of us, if you stay in a, as a Vice Chancellor or President of a good university, you don't even dream of resigning. You want to find out how can I stay in this place for as long as I go. But this person resigned because he said, I am pretending to be what I am because the knowledge that I've got do not fit the position that I'm in. He resigns, and then he go down and work and find what is true knowledge for him. You know? And this is what Al Ghazali said at the end of the day. There is this human trait that we need to look at and to find this balance. Yeah? And this human trait is what? He says wisdom, courage, temperance, and justice. We will talk about this a little bit more as a kind of a quote unquote criteria or a brand, I don't like to use the word brand, uh, of what this leadership uh, value uh, needs to us. Yeah? Uh, so, in essence, he says this you must have these three virtues wisdom, courage, and temperance, right? And you must arrive at justice. And he also recognizes that justice is actually a value that summarizes all this into one. They are not separate entities. They are actually emerging entities that later on serve.